Hi friends, welcome to Preschool Storytime. My name is Miss Ann and I am very excited to have you here today. Let's jump right in. We often start our preschool story times by singing our alphabet. And lately we've been practicing singing our alphabet to the tune of Row, Row, Row Your Boat. So that's the song we're going to use today. Now, if we're going to start with our alphabet at the very beginning, what's our first letter? Mm -hmm. Letter A. Here we go. I'm going to point to the letters. If you haven't sung to a different tune before, it's okay. You, you just keep practicing. I'm going to point to the letters, and you can always stop the video and rewind it and try again. The more we practice, the better we get at things, right? Excellent. Here we go. We're starting with our letter A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Well done, friends. Good job. Now, to make it even trickier, make you, make you think even harder about all these letters' names, we're going to sing it to the tune of Row, Row, Row Your Boat and backwards. So if we're going to sing it backwards, we need to start where? With what letter this time? Mm-hmm. Start with our Z. Ready? Here we go. Z, Y, X, W, V, U, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M, L, K, J, I, H, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. Great job, everyone. And friends, like we often do in story time, we're going to talk about one special letter today. We're going to be listening for this letter's sound and looking for this letter's shape. I'm going to make the sound and see if you can guess what our letter today is. This letter's sound is mmm, 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 mmm. What do you think? Yes, letter M. This is our uppercase M, or our capital M. Our lower, it looks, it sort of looks like mountains, doesn't it? There's an M sound, mountains. And our little M, or our lowercase M, looks a little more like hills. They're smoother on the top instead of pointy like our uppercase M. So we're gonna be listening for that Mm, sound. And we'll be looking at some pictures and, and some covers of books to see if we can find the M shape too. First, I thought I would like to sing a very, very funny song with you. This is a song I learned a long time ago and I still think it's really fun to sing. So this is called mm, Ah Went the Little Green Frog One Day. And yes, mm, it's like the song was made for talking about the letter M, right? Because we sing mm, Ah went the little green frog one day. So we're gonna sing this a couple of times and we're gonna try switching a couple of things up. I'll sing it through and you can follow along if you know it and if you don't, that's okay, we'll sing it again so we all have a chance. We're going to use, uh, a chance to sing the silly song. We're gonna use some fun motions and we're mostly gonna be working with our face. What do you think about that? Hmm. So when we say, mmm, I want you to Squeeze your eyes together and go, mmm. And when we say the word ah, or the sound ah, we're going to stick our tongues out like frogs. Ah. <laughs> so that'll look like, mmm. Ah, went the little green frog one day. You ready? In fact, we can even add some hands if we want to. We can go, mmm, ah, because that's fun too. And frogs also have spread out toes like this, don't they? We can pretend to be frogs. So let's sing mm, ah went the little green frog one day and then all the other frogs went bodo dio dio. Can you try saying that? 
Bodo de yo de yo. Bodo de yo de yo. Bodo de yo de yo. Good job. All right, let's sing it through one time and then we'll sing it again. And then I'm going to have you switch something just for fun. Ready? Can you get your mm ready? Here we go. Mm. I went the little green frog one day. Mm. I went the little green frog. Mm. I went the little green frog one day. Mm. I went the little green frog. All the other frogs went bodo de yo de yo. Bodo de yo de yo. Bodo de yo de yo. All the other frogs went bodo de yo de yo. But one little frog went mm ah mm. Isn't that a silly song? Let's sing it one more time this way, and then I'm going to tell you what we're going to change to see if we can sing it a different way, too. You ready to mm ah with me? Here we go. Mm ah went the little green frog one day. Mm ah went the little green frog. Mm ah went the little green frog one day. Mm ah went the little green frog. All the other frogs went bodo de yo de yo, bodo de yo de yo, bodo de yo de yo. All the other frogs went bodo de yo de yo, but one little frog went mm ah mm. <laughs> Thank you for singing that silly song with me. But we're not quite finished because I want to switch with the frogs say. So we're going to say that our our little our one little green frog says. Bodio went the little green frog one day, and then all the other frogs went ah ah ah, which is kind of hard work. It's kind of funny, and it's I'm gonna have to do it slower because I definitely can't do it as fast because it takes a lot of motion to squeeze your face and stick your tongue out, right? So let's try this. Bodio went the little green frog one day. Can I see your little fingers going, Bodio? Here we go. Bodio went the little green frog one day. Bodio went the little green frog. Bodio went the little green frog one day. Bodio went the little green frog. All the other frogs went All the other frogs went and one little frog went Bodio dio. Great job, everyone. Thank you so much. I think it's a really silly, fun song, and it gives our, our face a good workout when we're le learning how to make all of these sounds with our mouths. It's kind of fun to play around with. So like I said, we are going to look for some letter M's for those shapes of the letter M's. I went into the library to see if I could find some, and I found a whole bunch of books that have the letter M in the title. So I'm going to show you some pictures here. And these are all books that I'm going to put on a list because they're all really fun books. And I think it would be really cool if you got a chance to try and check them out from the library. So does anyone see any M's on this cover? Mm -hmm. There's one right here. Any other ones? Yep, there's another one right there. Do these look like our uppercase or our capital M's or our lowercase M's? They're our uppercase or capital M's. They're pointy like mountains. And this book is called My Poppy Has a Motorcycle. You hear those mm sounds in my and motorcycle? This is a really fun book. She goes on a ride with her puppy all around town and sees all the different people and all the different places that she loves. I hope you get a chance to check this book out. Like I said, I'm going to put together a big book list with a whole bunch of different books that have the letter M and some of the other things that we're talking about today in story time. And um, we'll link to that to our community collections page in the description of the video. So I found another book that has an M on it. You see an M here? Yeah, right at the beginning. It's another capital M. This book is called Max Speed. 
And this is a great book about imagination. Max likes to pretend that he's having major adventures. Major is another one of those mm words, isn't it? Major adventures using his imagination. So fun, fun book. I have one more book. Let's see how many M's we can find here. Let's start with the title. So the title is going to be right here. How many M's do you see here? I see one, two, three. Three capital M's. Now, what about in the author's name? Do you see any M's there? Way up here at the top, there are two M's in the name Gemma. So this book, friends, is all full of mmm sounds. This book is called Monty's Magnificent Mane. All three mmm sounds. This is Monty, and his mane is his hair. That's a lion's mane. And it's even more fun because oh, more is that mmm sound too. These little animals here are called meerkats. Meerkats and Monty's Magnificent Mane. I hope you get to read this. The pictures in this one are really, really beautiful. I'll show you one of my favorite pictures in this book. It's actually right towards the beginning. Look what the meerkats did with Monty's mane. I don't know if Monty likes having all those feathers and decorations going on. I have to read the book to find out what happens. Thanks for helping me hunt for M's. You can do this everywhere. There are letters everywhere, friends. How many M's do you think you can find at your house? Hmm. All right, friends, I want to tell you a story using our flannel board today. The story I'm going to tell you is based on this book, which is called Mouse Paint. It's by Ellen Stoll Walsh, and it's a really fun story. How many mice do we have on, the, on our picture here? Mm -hmm. Three, right? So I have, what? Three little mice. And our story starts like this. Once there were three mice, three white mice, on a white piece of paper. And the cat couldn't find them. Why do you think the cat can't find them? Hmm. Mm-hmm. They're the same color as the paper, right? So they're really hard to see. That's called camouflage, when an animal blends into its background and you can't see it very easily. So these mice are camouflaged right now on that piece of paper. But I just mentioned another animal, right? So who else do we need for this story? Oh, hi, kitty. Wow. My goodness, you sound grumpy. Everybody has grumpy days, though, sometimes, right? Are you feeling maybe frustrated? Yeah. Are you frustrated because you smell the mice, but you can't find them? Oh. Hey, I understand. You know, sometimes when I'm frustrated or I'm feeling really big emotions, it helps me if I take a little break. Do you think maybe you'd like to take a little nap? Maybe you'll feel less frustrated when you wake up. Here, let's get you a drink first. A little water. Okay. Now, let's have you go back and take a nice little nap. Well. While the cat was asleep, our mice decided to explore. So they started, whoops, <laughs> running around the house and looking to see what they could find. 
and they came across, what do these look like? Cans of paint, right? Three cans of paint. And they thought, well, it must be mouse paint. It must be for us to play in, right? So they thought that they would like to try being colorful. So our first little mouse right here thought that the red paint looked the prettiest. So she jumped into the red paint. And here, we're gonna make a silly sound and you can make it with me for all of the times that mice jump. We go, whoop, oh, sploosh. She jumped into the red paint and she swam and she kicked and she played. And when she came out, what happened? She was bright red. Oh, that looks like so much fun, said the other mice. So our second mouse decided to jump into the yellow paint. Ready to jump? And she went, whoop, no, sploosh. And she swam and she kicked and she played in the yellow paint until she came out all yellow. Well, our third little mouse, of course, did not want to be left out. Whoops. See, they're yellow mouse. <laughs> our third little mouse did not want to be left out. So what do you think she did? Mm -hmm. She jumped into the blue paint. You ready? Whoop. Oh, sploosh. And she swam and she kicked and she played in the blue paint until she came out blue. Wow, said the mice. This is really fun being all different colors instead of just being white. And as they looked at each other, they thought, you know, I kind of like some of these other colors too. So our first little mouse, our red mouse, thought, you know, I want to try being yellow now. So she jumped into the yellow paint. Whoop! Oh, sploosh! And she swam and she kicked and she played. And friends, do you think she turned yellow? Hmm, maybe? Let's see. She came out and she was orange. Whoa, said the other two mice. You were, you were red when you went into the yellow paint and you came out orange. So that means that red mixed with yellow makes orange. Oh, well, everybody needed to try now. So our little yellow mouse decided she wanted to try the blue paint to see what would happen. And she jumped right in. Whoop! Oh, sploosh! And she swam and she kicked and she played. And what color do you think she came out? She came out green. Oh, said the other mice. Well, you were yellow when you went into the blue paint, and now you're green. So yellow mixed with blue must make green. And of course, our third little mouse was not going to be left out of this fun. So she jumped into the red paint. Ready? Whoop! Oh, sploosh! And she swam and she kicked and she played there. And what color do you think she came out? She came out purple. Well, our three little mice were feeling quite proud of themselves for learning so much about different colors, but they were also feeling kind of sticky because the paint was starting to dry and it was making their fur stiff. So they thought they should probably take a bath. I don't see a bathtub. Can you think of a place where we could get some water? Did we see a place with water earlier in our story? Uh-oh. The kitty's water dish? You think the kitty's gonna like it if she if these mice, mice take a bath in her water dish? We're gonna find out. So our three colorful mice all jumped in. Whoop! Sploosh, and they swam and they kicked and they played in the water until they came out a nice soft white. But they weren't done playing with the paint so they decided to keep painting. But they were going to paint the paper this time. Oh dear! 
Elsie, come back. <laughs> they decided to paint the paper this time. Let's get our mice back on here. And they painted one piece of the paper. What was our first color, do you remember? They painted one part of the paper, red. What was our second color? What was our second mouse? They painted one part, yellow. What color was our third mouse the first time? They painted one part, blue. And do you remember what color they got when they mixed red with yellow? They painted one part orange. And what about when they mixed yellow with blue? Mm -hmm. They painted another part green. And what about blue with red? Mixing those up. They made one part purple. But of course, they left part of the paper white. Why do you think they left part of the paper white? They left part of the paper white because of the cat. Meow. Meow. And that's the story of mouse paint, friends. Thank you so much for listening. That's a fun story. When I was little, I loved mixing colors to see what colors came when you put a couple of different colors together, or sometimes even more than two colors together. It's a fun thing to experiment with. We have a letter. We've got a little letter here. This part of our letter on our mail says where the letter or our note is going to. And it is going to Preschool Storytime Friends, Herrick District Library. So it's in the right place, right? And up here, it usually tells us who the letter is coming from or where the letter is coming from. But there are some question marks here, which means that today it is a mystery who this letter is from. And we are going to get some clues and I'm going to see if you can guess what animal this letter is from. And this animal's name starts with the mmm sound, of course. Our mystery animal. We're going to sing a little song to the tune of If You're Happy and You Know It. This is We Got a Lovely Letter in the Mail. Here we go. Oh, we got a lovely letter in the mail. Yes, we've got a lovely letter in the mail. Getting mail is so much fun. Now let's see what's in this one. Oh, this lovely little letter in the mail. Okay, so we're going to open up our letter here, our envelope, and take out our letter. <clears throat> let's see here. Are you ready? Dear Storytime Friends, I get around by flying. That's a good clue. My body looks furry. Hmm. And, mo and people sometimes confuse me with my cousin, the butterfly. Hmm. Well, butterflies fly, but does butterfly start with the mm sound? B -b no. It starts with the b sound, the b, b sound. If its body looks fuzzy and it flies kind of like a butterfly, can you think of something that starts with the mmm? That, that fits that description? Mm, did you guess moth? There it is. I'm a moth. And here's a picture. This kind of moth is a really beautiful moth. It's called a Luna moth. And friends, when I was thinking about what animal we were going to have a letter from today, I thought it would be fun to learn a little bit more about what makes moths and butterflies different. Because 
I sometimes mix them up. Mix. So this book, I'm just going to show you a few pages here. We've got Butterfly or Moth, How Do You Know? And it's going to tell us a few ways that we can tell the difference between butterflies and moths. So, we've got up here, this says knobs or no knobs. And they're talking about the antennae here that come off of the head of the butterfly and the moth. A butterfly's antennae, um, they use them for smelling. And they are usually long and thin with a little knob at the top, or at the end. Moths' antennae are shorter and they're feathery. They look a little bit like feathers, like a bird feather. And they help a moth smell and fly. So that's one way you can tell the difference between a butterfly and a moth. Look at the antennae. But if we are looking at butterflies and moths, friends, we need to be very gentle with them because they are very fragile animals and we need to make sure we take good care of them. The book also says that butterflies usually fly during the day and rest at night, but moths usually fly at night and rest during the day. So if you're seeing something that looks a little bit like a butterfly at night, it's probably a moth instead of a butterfly. There was one more thing I wanted to share with you. Closed or open. The book taught me, and I did not know this before, that a butterfly usually rests with its wings closed, so the, with the wings together and sticking up like this. And a moth usually rests with its wings open or spread out. And another thing about butterflies and moths, friends, that, that I knew that this book reminded me is that usually butterflies are brighter colors than moths. Moths are usually more grays and browns and, and duller colors than our butterflies, which are usually quite bright. But that said, there are always exceptions to rules, right? Because this moth is a beautiful moth. And it's, it's a light green, but it's definitely not what I would call a dull color. It's really, really lovely. And you can see its furry antennae there. You can tell it's a moth that way. So cool. I love learning new things. And I love learning new things to share with you at story time. Well, friends, I'm afraid that's the end of story time this time. I'm going to sing a little song because I want to thank you for coming to story time. Here we go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for playing. Thanks for listening today. Sadly, story time is over. But I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much for watching, friends, and I will see you next time.